talking about relationship deal breakers. And I'm just going to sample a few because different vibes for different people, okay? Different strokes for different folks. Different relationships require different things. My deal breakers may not be your deal breakers. But kunazila zinakwanga too fundamental for any relationship. For example, at the top of the list... The, the issue with children. I think this is something people have to have this conversation very early on in the decision. I was watching Grey's Anatomy where this uh, surgeon, uh, very early in the relationship, she was very clear, I do not want children. <coughs> Gets into a relationship with Owen and Owen at the back of his mind is thinking, I will convince her somehow. I will convince her somehow to have children along the way. And when she finally says, I thought we had this, this conversation, I am never having children. And they're like, what do you mean? Every woman has children. Every woman is required to have, you know, if the conversation is, I do not want to have children and you want to have children, don't force someone else into a relationship. End that relationship very early because it's a non-negotiable. If they want children, you don't want children, you don't need to be there. Set them free. Let them go. Yeah, I think in summary, because there are four actual ones which really just, those ones are an end-all be-all. Mm -hmm. As Turiya said, children and your plans for children. Politics and religion is another one. Mm -hmm. Finances are another one. Those three things, if they're not aligned, mm -hmm. just don't do it. Mm. If your financial standing is not um, the same as the other person's and you have no intentions of either matching up or fixing it, leave it alone. Mm -hmm. If your political views vary and differ in such a way that it's almost an argument every day, leave it alone. If, again, um, religion, relig especially religion, People, if you guys are not of the same religion and you none of you is either trying to convert or you know, switch sides, leave it alone. It's always going to be a problem. It's never going to go away. So those four, I think, are ultimately just an end-all, be-all. But there are some which are conversations you can have. For example, can you deal with a long-distance relationship? That one is a really per person, per person situation. Because what if you actually decide, okay, we're going in this relationship and I can't deal with a long distance relationship, right? However, you went in, both of you were working in the same city, same everything, all was well, right? But at some point in the relationship, now you are engaged, married, whatsoever. And this person has gotten a contract in a different country. Now the commitment is different. And then also, depending on how long you've been in a relationship with this person, a few things do change. Is it temporary? Is it permanent? Are you planning on moving with them to the other country? Are they planning on coming back at some point? Like, these are conversations you can have. However, in the beginning of the relationship and someone says they cannot deal with a long-distance relationship, please don't put them in a situation where now they have to deal with it. It's not mm. fair. It's not right. You're changing their life in a drastic way that they can't undo. And also the way you communicate, you and your partner. Yes, people communicate differently, but when it comes to your communication, if you two are communicating very differently and you're not compatible, trust me, you will be talking, but the other one is not listening. They're just hearing you, but they're not really listening to what you're saying. They really can't comprehend what you're saying. And also fighting styles. It's not just about communication. How are you fighting? Do you fight angrily? Do you fight in a calm manner? Do you, if you all are very different in how you communicate your feelings and your frustration, and even as far as your love languages, you can love a person. You love them with all your heart, but you're not loving them in the way they receive love which is something you have to take into account so how are you communicating is it compatible how are you guys telling each other i didn't like how you did that ama is everything always a confrontation and if you know or another person is always calm you're always confrontational they're always calm and you know there's a bit of a difference there you need to work on how you communicate and figure out how to communicate with each other effectively. Another one, and I think these ones again go in combination, mm -hmm. lifestyle and sex life. Those two things go hand in hand. For example, you are an active person, you're always on the hike, you're always on the move, you're always, 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 always on the go, right? The other person is a chill person. They're always at home, they're homebody, they don't do much, right? Your energies are going to differ. If you're up at 6 a.m., you're out doing hiking, and then you end up coming back home after you've gone to the club at like 10 a.m., I mean at 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. or like midnight, for example. You get home. Me, I've been chilling at home the whole time. Mm. I'm not going to wake up and have sex with you. I'm sorry. That's not going to work. And so your lifestyle and your sex drives 
plus your sexual uh, appetites will really, really um, always be antagonistic. Mm. If they're too antagonistic, you will find yourself in a situation where you can't control either of those things. Mm -hmm. So try and either one, find a way to match up your lifestyles with your sex lives. And that way you can be able to find a happy and healthy balance. If it is too much of a disparaging issue, just leave it. It's never going to be resolved and it's always going to be an issue. Yeah, and also from that, the question you should ask yourself if you are actually attracted to this person. Oh, yes. Because attraction is actually the main factor. That's mm -hmm. why you two got together in the first place. Boy saw girl, girl saw boy, and there was connection, there was chemistry. So ask yourself, am I still attracted to this person? Have I ever been attracted to this person? And while you're asking this question, yourself this question, you can tell if a person actually likes you, likes yep. you, or if they're just there to get something out of you. If they make plans, do they come through with it? If they make, uh, if they communicate that they're going to do something for you, they make a promise unprompted. They say, you know what? I'm going to take you for, for dinner, you know, uh, tomorrow, 9 p.m., be ready. And then they never show up. You're like, clearly, clearly, why are you breaking promises? Why can't you keep your word? So you can tell if a person is attracted to them. You also need to ask yourself if you if you're attracted to them, and if there's that baseline, there's that chemistry, maybe a relationship can grow from that. Another thing, I saw this um, on a video earlier today where someone said mm -hmm. that the biggest reason why people break up is as simple as your routine things. For instance, mm -hmm. um, they gave an ex a very simple example, which I think up until now applies. If two people are kept in a room, two people in a, a couple are kept in a room together for a long a hotel room, Airbnb sort of thing, and they're kept there for about a month, um, most of the relationships, about 90% of the relationships that worked simply worked because of this. I am one partner, I look outside, I see a bird. I'm like, ah, oh, babe, can you look at this bird? It looks really cool. The people who ended up looking at that bird most of those relationships, 9 out of 10 of those relationships actually survived. The people who ended up either looking at it one time, ignoring it another time, you know, never fully responding, or just like, oh yeah, I see it, keep it moving, type energy, those people, most of those relationships ended up in divorce and breaking up. Why? Because it's those simple things, those simple little things that if you do not show interest in in your relationship, they accumulate. If I tell you, ah, did you see this video that I sent you? And you're like, yeah, yeah, I'll look at it later. The next video I send you, the next video I send you, that's an accumulation. Many small things start to accumulate of you not showing interest in my interest. And these accumulated issues end up becoming such a huge chunk. Una fight nam to you're wondering, by the way, where is this fight coming from? We just argued about a plate. Why is this uh, where is this energy of arguing for like a million years coming from? It's simply because it's an accumulation of issues. So be interested in your partner. If they're not interested in you and what you're doing and what you're saying, guess what? It's not going to work. It's just not going to work. And also a matter of trust. Do you trust them? Do they trust you? Uh, even if it's not cheating, have they said that they'll do something and they didn't? That's a break of trust. Have, have you had a conversation? It was pillow talk. It was just between you two. And then you had it with somebody else and you're like, wait, wait a minute. Mm. I told you this in confidence. So if you can't trust your partner, trust me. That relationship is not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Attention and concerns. If this person doesn't give you attention, it becomes a problem. Sometimes there are unhealthy versions of attention, mm -hmm. which again are reviewed per person sharing. Mm -hmm. And I think I will summarize it in, are you getting attention from your partner? Is it healthy? Mm -hmm. Number two, are they ignoring your concerns or are they constantly listening to you and actually putting them into account? Mm -hmm. Very important things in a relationship. If yeah. these don't, don't work, it's not going to work. I hope you've learned something. I hope you're able to establish good, healthy boundaries for, from this conversation that we've had. Yep. And just continue to soar. We have said, we're actually making a pact right now. We will be doing positive content. At our okay, watch, watch positive content. Let us stop being so dependent on negative content to give us serotonin, to give us dopamine, to give us vibes. Okay, my name is Rifa and I'll see you tomorrow. I just watched uh, Love is Blind and I have a question. Where would you cry over your ex? In a Range Rover? No. What? In a yacht. You're together. Uh -huh. You're starting to date someone else. Uh -huh. This other person tells you, by the way, I just saw my ex. And they start crying about the fact that they just saw their ex. Why would